And our next presentation is from Love Care. Love is here from Verizon Business Group with us. He's managing principal and master architect, and he's going to talk to us about 5G, not only in terms of its building blocks as a technology in and of itself, but really more importantly in terms of some of the business process outcomes that it can really help us achieve. So with no further ado, Love, the floor is yours, and thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, everyone who's uh, attending this virtual conference. Um, so as uh, Thomas said that I'm from Verizon and I will be sharing with you what 5G is all about and what are different art of possibilities we can think about from the various use cases. So here is my brief agenda that I will be focusing on in the next uh, 15 to 18 minutes. Uh, share with you a little bit about what the pro projected outlook for 5G and its drivers look like, and then talk a little bit about what are the key building blocks and the capabilities that are so unique to 5G, unlike what we have in 4G, and then talk about a few example use cases uh, which are very, very relevant for the financial services. And then lastly, talk about some other details, including give you a list of references uh, which would be a good reading material for you to read, download, and a couple of uh, white papers that may be very helpful uh, from the perspective of having a good understanding of 5G and the use cases as they relate to your business. Uh, lastly, of course, we will have a few minutes for questions and answers, and um, then we will go from there. Uh, so with respect to the outlook that uh, 5G has in the next three years, because this report was published in 2018, and what uh, the authors are saying that uh, by 2023, there will be at least a billion 5G subscribers on the enhanced mobile broadband services. Uh, this is a global uh, projection, by the way. So therefore, uh, let's keep that in the back of our mind. It's not just the US. Uh, and it is not very unlikely that billion subscribers can be achieved, given that China is pretty uh, ahead in this game, as well as South Korea. Then they are talking about uh, more than 20% of the world's population will be covered. Uh, about 50% of these uh, will be from North America, which is pretty exciting news. And then 20% of mobile traffic will be over the 5G networks. So you can find many different analyst reports, but this is the one that you know I just picked up in the interest of time. And all of the reports that you will find will have very exciting news for the 5G because of the capabilities that it offers. Now, with respect to what is going on and why 5G is becoming so critical in the many, many different verticals. Uh, so let me just spend a minute or two talking about what happened and why it came to being the way it is. So uh, for that, I have to talk to you a little bit about the fourth industrial revolution. I'm not going to go into any detail, but you know, if you take a look at uh, the time it took from the first revolution to the second was almost 100 years from a manpower that was enhanced through the steam power to the electrical energy, and then another approximately 100 years from electrical era to electronics and information technology-based revolution that came, which is what I think we can all relate to because we have been living and we have seen all of that uh, enhancement that came from the electronics and the IT industry. And now 50, 60 years later, um, the projections have been made that uh, the fourth industrial revolution is coming, which will enable us to have real-time enterprise applications. So what are the, the causes behind that? Well, the causes are, there are five fundamental technologies which have pretty much reached the cusp of uh, achieving the hockey stick growth rate. And in order to expand and make them more pervasive, a new technology is needed, and that is 5G. 
but the underlying drivers are the capabilities that are offered by artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, video, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, any kind of reality that you can think of. Cloud, believe it or not, even though we are all familiar with the cloud, but with the hyperscale and the next generation of clouds and the edge-based computing that is coming out. Uh, and last but not least, IoT. IoT has been around, but all of these five technologies are picking up a lot of momentum and they get tied up with the glue that 5G uh, enables. And we will see next, uh, what are the key fundamental building blocks of 5G that are exciting and that would make the 5G become very, very pervasive? Uh, obviously, you need different kinds of uh, spectrum, uh, low band, mid band, and what we call as millimeter wave or other ways of calling it high band. And uh, we have all the combination of these bands uh, but the services we, ha we have launched so far are based on high band, which is the millimeter wave, uh, 28 gigahertz spectrum. The next important building block for uh, launching 5G is the ability to carry that traffic from point A to point B. And therefore, uh, fiber has to be there uh, to connect various locations. And Verizon has been going with fiber deployment pretty significantly. Uh, the third important uh, element which is required in the architecture is the ultra-dense small cell deployment. Why is that important? Because in the case of um, especially the high band millimeter wave spectrum, uh, that spectrum has a propagation of about half a mile. Unlike the 4G LTE, which has about two and a half mile of uh, propagation, and in order to expand the coverage with 5G, uh, you need to have very dense architecture, deploy the um, antennas, the radios, uh, very close to uh, the locations where you want to offer 5G. We have been doing the uh, dense deployment of cells in the 4G also, but now it becomes even more critical. The next, piece of a foundational block is the new radio, which is based off 3GPP standards for 5G. And it has a lot more capabilities. Um, can't go into the details of that. But a couple of few things that are important to mention is the ability for massive multiple input, multiple output uh, antennas which allow us to give almost 20, 25 times more capacity because of the dense nature of the, uh, these antennas that are deployed in the bay. The next important capability within the new radio is the wave forming. Uh, that gives us the precise transmission of the radio waves from one point to the other point, almost in the six degree uh, uh, of these spread that it has uh, and then you know uh, enables the ability to use uh, flexibly different spectrums you know we can mix and match uh, 28 gigahertz with the mid band and this is all flexible and full duplex the next important thing to mention here is that all of the 5g architecture is based on the principle of the software defined networking and network function virtualization, which uh, I'm assuming uh, some of the uh, folks in the audience are familiar with uh, from the wireless side, but now in the wireless uh, solution also, these principles are uh, applied end to end. And one of the things that is very important to mention here among many things is the network slicing capability, uh, which is along the lines of the network function virtualization what that simply means in simple language is that we can create multiple slices of the wireless 5G wireless network from end to end and ensure a guaranteed quality of service. And I'll show you an example of use case where uh, this might be useful. I uh, just want to uh, mention that in the spirit of transparency, 
that network slicing is not available right now, but it is something that is in the roadmap uh, for future, uh, is going to revolutionize the adoption of 5G in the financial services area as well as in many other uh, verticals that we have. Coupled with those foundational blocks are these uh, eight currencies as um, we talk about, uh, which are very, very crucial. And it is very important to understand that these currencies ultimately make what 5G is all about. Uh, so whether they are in the area of speed and throughput, mobility and connected devices, service deployment and energy efficiency, or very important reliability and latency, they're all important, but each one has a different need and therefore can warrant us to uh, apply in different use cases. So you must have heard that 5G offers high data rate speed up to 10 gigabit per second and latency of sub millisecond. Those are what people normally know, but I think it's also important to know that 5G will be able to uh, provide the signal even at the speed of 500 kilometer per hour if any vehicle or aircraft is going at that speed. And the other important thing is that unlike the case of 4G LTE, where you can have uh, about 1,000 devices per square kilometer that you can get connectivity, now in the case of 5G, it will be uh, up to 1 million devices you can have connected in one square kilometer. Uh, reliability in the case of 5G is going to be five nines, which is the carrier grade reliability that we are familiar with from the wireline uh, networks. And as I mentioned, latency could be uh, as low as one millisecond or 10 millisecond. Uh, latency becomes enhanced with the advent of, um, with the, advent of the uh, mobile edge computing that makes the 5G network not only as a network fabric, but it has the compute fabric also uh, attached to it. So coupled with the mobile edge computing or in short Mac, we can achieve the latency of very, very low latency for the applications that are crucial. Um, and then um, these platforms that are coming up because of 5G are going to create a lot of disruption. Uh, the most important one is going to be uh, AI at the edge and then the intelligent video analytics, as well as uh, the ability to create um, intelligent customer engagement and the, the immersive experience that we can have through all the AR, VR kind of technologies. Um, a little bit about what is the mobile edge computing. In the traditional cloud, if you are familiar, uh, we have the situation of uh, all the devices are connected through wireless or wireline network and go to cloud compute. In the case of the mobile edge compute, the, that Mac device is sitting at the edge of the network, thereby enabling these devices to communicate back and forth pretty quickly and achieve the kind of uh, latency that we are looking for. So uh, this is one use case scenario as an example, which will be very powerful once we have the network slicing capability. And think about this, you know, you have a desired outcome of doing trading decisions in real time. So you could have one of the slice from the network slicing for trading application, other could be for chatbot slice. That basically means that uh, a customer needs an immediate resolution about their request. So the AI algorithms are running on the edge that will allow us to uh, communicate in real time and likewise the video chat. Um, the example that I'm presenting now is based out of a 5G trial that we conducted with a customer from the financial services uh, side. And in this particular case, the trial that was conducted last year uh, involved deploying fixed wireless access uh, in one of their location 
and the idea was that this customer wanted to see uh, what kind of downlink or download speeds they can get and are those really comparable to what they are getting from the broadband circuit through some cable operator. And they were very pleased to see that um, they achieved seven times faster download speeds compared to what they already had. And you can see on the right hand side, uh, the speeds that were achieved and the latency that, that also achieved, which helped them uh, make the decision about moving from uh, traditional broadband to the fixed wireless access. Uh, this is a chart of the potential 5G based use cases uh, that uh, are provided by this uh, company called Celent. And um, in, in my references that I'll show you, you will see that um, this is explained in a lot more detail. But the idea is that various aspects of the financial services uh, can avail the 5G capabilities. People have been talking about branches that are customer facing. What can we do? How can we make them more uh, user friendly and increase the customer experience at the same time improve our revenue stream? So there are various things that are detailed out in that report. I would urge you to uh, take a look at that. Similarly, people have been talking about you know, making ATMs lightweight with thin client and allow contextual experience so that the user gets what he or she is looking for. And then you can do the updates on the ATM machine pretty fast without uh, having to invest a lot on the ATM hardware and software. Um, in the end, I would say that, um, you know, we also have the ability to offer uh, private networks using the LTE as well as 5G. There are many customers in many situations uh, prefer to have private network for various reasons. And private networks offer all kinds of capabilities that you're looking for from any cellular solution so this is going to be a dedicated network for your use only, will ensure high performance because there's no other uh, traffic going on. And you can still do seamless mobility with that and um, grow to 5G. If you start with private LTE, there will be a software upgrade that would be required to make you uh, go through uh, private 5G. Uh, we started the journey in 2018. Um, and uh, by the end of next year, last year, uh, we had 30 plus cities where we had launched the mobile uh, 5G ultra wideband service. Uh, we will have 60 plus service, uh, cities covered by the end of this year. Uh, and um, also on top of that, we have launched uh, 16 of the uh, NFL stadiums with 5G and five of the NBA and NHL arenas. So there's a lot of work that has already gone and a lot more is happening um, this year. And we are very excited that a lot more enterprise customers are also trying through various POCs or field trials, the capabilities that we have. Um, I want to leave behind a couple of thoughts that uh, we have uh, 5G labs in various cities right now. We have six locations where we, we have these labs there. We talk about you know, various demonstrations of the use cases and I would urge and encourage everyone to visit our New York City lab. Obviously after the coronavirus situation is over, uh, no one is traveling or going there any, anyway. We just wanted to let you know that uh, these capabilities are avail available for you to come and take a look at it. A lot more things we can talk when you uh, visit our lab in Chelsea, New York City, or for that, that matter, any of the other locations that I had uh, mentioned. Um, and uh, here is the list of the references, uh, which I mentioned that you, know, you are welcome to download, read, and get much more information uh, relative to what I'm able to squeeze in this short period of time. 
Uh, the, the report I was talking about from Salent is the last one you can download uh, or the hard copy. But of course, you know, hard copy you can't get. Uh, we were planning to give the hard copy when the conference was going to be live in person. Uh, but anyway, I want to close. Uh, I want to close by uh, saying that if you can, no, I didn't mean to launch this thing. Uh, what I wanted to leave behind you with you is that in summary, uh, there are five things you should remember. Uh, one is 5G has amazing new capabilities, like you saw the super low latency and super high bandwidth with the computer function at the edge. And then you see that uh, th those things enable uh, cognitive video AI at the edge and precision AR. We also believe that volumetric capture and next generation video collaboration will be a big thing for many different kinds of use cases. And we in Verizon have deep um, understanding of the financial vertical and the experience. So we are speaking from that experience and we'll be more than pleased to host you at uh, one of our 5G lab uh, when the time is right. 